Guys, welcome back to Shining Falls Lodge. If you are looking to do a fly-in kayak fishing trip, which I've never heard of before, you can do it at Shining Falls because Old Town Kayaks shipped up six pedal drive 120s, the one I'm in right now, they're staying here. So pretty unique, uh, pretty unique opportunity. This is day three on our trip here. It's been amazing. It's cool having the independence in the kayak because everyone can do their own thing. But anyways, today we are using the Helix 7. I'm gonna run through the settings how I like to use it, what fish look like on the graph, just because, uh, you know, electronics can be a little overwhelming. And there's a couple tips and tricks which will, you know, get your full potential out of this unit because it is amazing what you can do out of these entry level units. All right, as I am paddling to our first area, let's talk about the graph. This is a Helix 7. Um, I often get asked, hey Jay, what's, what's the best budget fish finder? I haven't used them all. What I tell people is like when you're choosing a brand, I would pick the brand based off the mapping you need in your area. So that's some research you gotta do on your own and see who's got, who's got the best mapping on the lake. If you have a home lake, a cottage on a lake, you probably wanna buy the graph that has the best mapping. I think for Garmin, it's called Sea Maps, has really good mapping. For Hummingbird, it's Lake Master. For Lowrance, me personally, there's a local company called Angler's Edge Mapping. They've got a bunch of you know lakes in Northwest Ontario and Manitoba mapped. I own all three brands for that specific reason to have all the mapping. Um, I know that's not necessarily realistic and probably a bit excessive, but if there's no mapping on the lake, my go-to is a Hummingbird Helix. It was, I, I think if I'm correct, one of the first brands to offer the auto charting technology. And basically what auto chart is, is it creates a map as you drive, which is phenomenal for these lakes that aren't charted because as you're driving, it's creating a map and then it just gives you that much more of an idea of the underwater world, you know, what spots, where the fish might be holding. And it's cool because some of these lodge owners, they, they will run a bunch of helixes and then they can share the data and eventually they create a map of this entire lake, which typically this lake would never be on the radar for any of the big mapping companies come map. So let's start by firing this up. This is a Helix 7. I think it's a great size. I make a portable kit for it. Flying trips when I mount it on a boat. Um, works great on the kayak. Doesn't draw a ton of battery power. Um, this model has side imaging. So on the side here, I have a portable transducer bracket. All right, so first thing is just holding that power button and power it up. Behind me, we are powered by Dakota Lithium. This is the 10 amp hour version, perfect for a screen like this. I couldn't even tell you exactly what the runtime is, but I'm pretty sure it's it's days. Live, live imaging and stuff, you're gonna burn through more. When you turn on your graph, it will take a minute for it to lock in satellites for GPS. How to flip through your screens, you can either press view or you can press exit. So as I press exit, you can see it's flipping. So this is called side imaging. This is shooting side to side. See the 70 in the top right, 70 in the top left. That means it's shooting out this way. Side imaging technology, is phenomenal and it still has a place even with all the live imaging it definitely has a place because it allows me to you know when i'm paddling now cover a swath and i can see if there's rocks to the right if there's fish i'm not just seeing directly below the boat which is your convention your conventional 2d sonar um, pressing exit now we're on our conventional 2d talk about the settings there there's different screens for now i'm going to show you the map screen and we're going to talk about auto chart before we get started so if i zoom out here so this is Family Lake where we're at. You can see some of my waypoints and my trails. So as you zoom in here, you can see the island outlines. And that's because I have something called the Zero Lines Card. If you have a Hummingbird Helix, you gotta get the Zero Lines Card. Unless you only fish lakes that are mapped, the Zero Lines Card, what it does is it gives you the outline of all the lakes. So it gives you the shoreline, but it also gives you added recording time for that auto charting I was talking about. So I'm gonna turn on the auto charting right now and I'll tell you about it a little more. So auto chart, right, because I'm on the map screen, I'm gonna go to the right, right arrow, auto chart, and then right again, record. Now it's recording. If I didn't have that zero lines card in, it would record internally and it would only record for a certain amount of hours and it would record over itself. So you get that zero lines card and it gives you a pretty much unlimited recording time. So right now as you zoom in, what it's doing is it's extrapolating the data, interpolating, one of those words, because it's marking that island as a zero and we're in 20 feet. So it's kind of just doing the math and guessing what the distance is gonna be. The more you drive back and forth, it's like paint by numbers and it fills in that map and you get a more accurate reading on the bottom. I have that auto chart running all the time and it's constantly recording. If I find something of interest, I'll come back and I'll zigzag back, back and forth over it. But that's the first thing I do when I turn on my graph is I'll just turn on my auto chart and let it record the whole time. When I'm just driving around and scouting, if it's for the first time, I'm gonna keep it recording in the background and I'm gonna flip over to side imaging 
and 2D. All right, so now this is side imaging, this is 2D. So when you go into the menu here, you obviously got a million options, but the one important thing to know is active pain. So when you press menu, it's gonna say active pain. So if I wanna change my side imaging settings, you can see how it's outlined there. That's the active pain. If I wanna change my 2D settings, then I wanna kick it over there. So it, it can be tough sometimes when you press menu, it's like, why can't I change the settings? So the active pain now is the 2D imaging. If you go down to split position, split position will split how much you're seeing. So it, either you can have more 2D or more side imaging. Typically side imaging is one that you wanna see more of and the 2D I'd wanna see less of. 2D, like I said, is showing directly below your boat. I'm not exactly sure what the transducer angle is, but it's probably, you know, I, I wanna say 20 degrees down or something. It's like a flashlight shining down. It's showing you what is below your boat. Side imaging is like shooting sideways. Basically with the side imaging, the harder return, the lighter it's gonna show on the screen. Um, with the 2D, you've got a different color palette and depending on how you have the gain, you know, the hardest return, meaning the, har it, the harder the object is, it's gonna show dark red and then a lighter object is gonna show like green or yellow. So right now, for example, you look at the screen, you can see that it tells me, it tells me bottom's 15 feet, but if you look at this bar on the side, it says five, 10, 15. You can tell right now that we're actually in probably 13 feet of water. So that 15 is the, just like the computer, I don't wanna say guessing, but telling you what, what it might be. But if you actually look at that return, you can tell, well, we're actually just under 15 feet of water. So sometimes that number isn't 100% accurate just because sometimes there's glitches and it doesn't keep up necessarily. And then you've got sensitivity for the 2D. So right now it's cranked to 20, but as I turn it down, you can see the bottom become a less solid line. It's a little bit personal preference. Obviously the higher you turn your sensitivity, the higher you turn your gain, the bigger the fish is gonna show up, the bigger your lure is gonna show up. So sometimes people crank the gain all the way high and they'll be like, oh, look at all these fish. But it's like, well, they might actually be minnows or perch and you just have your gain crank so high. So you always want perspective of what your lure looks like, what fish looks like. And sometimes that just takes experience of using it. After a while, you can be like, these are small fish. I don't wanna fish for these. So, I mean, there's different color palettes. Uh, chart speed, I like the chart speed all the way high. We're gonna pedal over the other kayaks and see what they're doing. But right now, if you look at the side imaging, to the right, you can see it's completely flat, probably sand or mud. To the left, you're seeing rocks. And that's the, that's the beauty of side imaging is while I'm paddling forward, I'm scanning to the side. So as far as using side imaging for finding fish, finding fish in the rocks is typically tough. It's, it's good to find structure. It's good to tell what the bottom is. But if you're trying to see fish in rocks, it's gonna be difficult. On the other hand, seeing fish on mud or sand is a lot easier because that return pops out a little more, but we're gonna keep pedaling and looking around. I'll see if I can, I'll, I'll move the split screen over a little bit just so if we do see fish, I can, there's some bait. So basically that line is bottom. So you wanna, in an ideal world, see, we're looking for walleyes. They'll typically be, you know, either on the bottom or a little bit separated off. There's a small fish on the bottom. On this kayak adventure, we have people from all over. We have our buddy Keys, who films for Wired to Fish. If you've not heard Wired to Fish, you're probably living under a rock. They do all sorts of educational fishing videos. And uh, Keys is kind of the kayak expert. And uh, if you head over there, you'll probably see some other videos from this trip. What a day. All right, there's Keys. Check him out, Wired to Fish. We'll be dropping a bunch of videos. When are the videos dropping from this? Next week. He's got four videos filmed ready from this trip. This guy doesn't stop. Great educational stuff. You want good teaching videos, check out Wired to Fish. We are gonna keep driving around and looking. You can see now, switch from rock to a softer bottom. You know, walleye fish, especially later in the year, is uh, you know a key thing to look for is transitions. So when that rock changes to the mud, and that's often at the base. So I'm always watching. You can see now on my 2D imaging, it changed from a hard red bottom to a greenish bottom. And that green and yellow is a softer return. So when that sonar is pinging back, it's a lighter color. So when I, let's say I drive back towards this rock, and I can tell, see how it's starting to turn more red? And when we actually hit into that rock, you'll see the side imaging show some chunky rocks. So right now we switch to rock. And if you look at the same time on the side imaging, it's, uh, you can see that chunky rock off to the left. So I can tell to the left is where that rocky point sticks out. So when I'm driving a spot for the first time, unless I mark a couple of real good fish, I'm typically just trying to get a lay of the land because there's, there's something called a spot on the spot. I'm creating the map still. If I flip back now, press exit a couple times. So right now, everywhere I've paddled, you can see it, so it was 20 feet there. Now we're up into 15. But if I do a zigzag, you can see it's still creating that map. So right there, you see that contour, one, two, three, four, there's a pretty tight drop there from 11 feet to 16 feet. You know, definitely could hold a walleye. So 
But right now I'm just gonna drive back and forth. I can tell this rocky point sticks out. I can see he's catching fish. So I know that the tip of this point is gonna hold fish and I'm looking for that transition. So I'm watching my graph. So right now, see that flicker underneath? In my mind, that means we're close to the rock. It's like getting a signal. And you can see the side imaging is getting a little bit brighter. So I know we're on the verge of the edge of this reef. You kind of get a little bit warning by that double echo. And now you can see the bottom is red, turned to a harder white to the right. So I know the hump's out to the right now. So I could just keep crisscrossing, but I just kind of want to see if I can loop the outside of this reef. You can see lots of smaller chunky rock out to the right. That's what I like when I'm looking for a while is kind of that scattered bouldery stuff. I don't necessarily like the massive chunky rocks. For bright days like this, if you press the power button, you can go to light. You can brighten it all the way up to 10, which definitely makes it look a little bit nicer there. So there's fish on the bottom. I'm gonna try dropping down. If I have it set right, you can see the lure dropping down. You can see that flickering right there. That's actually my lure dropping down. I'll, maybe if I bump up the sensitivity a bit, you'll be able to see my lure a little bit better. So there you can actually see your lure going up and down. I can I remember when I talked about that real time area. So you can see that I'll crank up the gain even more so it's easier to see. And it all has to depend with the angle, how your transducer is. If I bend it out a little bit, I'll probably get a stronger reading. So right now it also gives you a reference point on, you know, how big that lure marks versus what a fish might look like. So a fish should look significantly bigger than your lure. Otherwise you're fishing for the wrong size fish. If you're in the vicinity of seeing fish, if I'm marking a lot of fish, I'm not necessarily concerned about dropping right on that specific fish because the whole area might have a pot of fish. So sometimes, you know, it's like, oh, I really want to drop into the transducer. Well, for every fish under the transducer, there could be another one or two or three fish cruising all around here. And then sometimes you get so caught up in fishing for that specific fish that you just, you don't fish properly, right? Anyways, that's what the lure looks like, as you can see me reeling it up there. So something else, I saw a couple fish there, so I'm gonna press mark. And what mark does is it creates a waypoint. Anytime I see, you know, a point of interest, even, even if it's like a rocky spine, like in 20, 30 feet of water, which might be like a good summer or fall spot, and I'm driving, you know, in the spring or whatever, I'll often still drop a waypoint just because that might be a point of interest in the future. And it's like, you can hold thousands of waypoints on these graphs. So it's like, I'm always laying waypoints, even if it's, you know, let's say I find some sunken wood that, you know, maybe a bass would be living in it later in the year, drop a waypoint. And I'll show you what that looks like later. Once we, once we get on some fish, I'll show you my process. We're still looking, so we'll keep driving around. There's some fish, they look small. You can see a big pot of them down there. Might be bait. It's kind of tough to tell exactly what we're dealing with. So we're pulling into basically the top of the reef right now. There's lots of fish there. That could be like a pot of perch or little walleyes or something. Like I said, as I'm driving, I'm always laying a waypoint because I just saw a bunch of fish there. So now if I go exit, I'm gonna switch. To, now, now that I've like, let's say we found some fish and we're confident in the area. Now I'm gonna go to the three screen approach or even two. I don't necessarily need the side imaging as much, but if you look at this, you can see it's just so clear now with where those fish are in the reef. Like, look at that. It's just that one little nugget that sticks out there. And it seems like there's fish on the top of it. So you can see we're right on top. We've laid a waypoint on that edge, a waypoint there. And then it just keeps giving you reference points of where those fish are. And the more you fish it, the more you drop waypoints, you can kind of key in on the spot on the spot. There's a nice fish under the boat right here. See that line right there? That's one of the best marks we've seen. Right there, so now I can actually see my jig. Look at that, there's my jig and I can see the fish underneath. So right now, look at that fish. He's coming off bottom. Oh, he's thinking about it. He's right on top of it. See, I lift my jig, see how there's a gap? So that's the fish, that's bottom, there's my jig. I'm gonna drop back down and see if he'll eat it off the bottom. So I'll pop it a couple times and if things go as hope, look, look how that fish is sinking down to the bottom. There we go, he just ate it. Oh! Ho, ho, ho. Again. That's so cool, it's like, it's video games, right? And, and you know, obviously there's lots to talk about live scope these days. You know, you're spending thousands of dollars. This unit you can get for a few hundred dollars. Obviously the wind is slowly drifting us, but we'll, look, there's fish coming up again. I got one. Oh, I lost him. There's a lot of fish down there. And right now it'd be a situation I could probably turn the gain down a little bit. But like, look at all that. There's definitely fish racing around. We're on them, they're right on the top of the hump. As you can see, it's, it's no denying once you have the map where those fish are holding. There we go. Not big. Oh, come on. There's minnow stealers. We're just doing a jig and a minnow right now. Look at all the fish down there. 
that fish chased it to the bottom. It's gonna be another instant bite. Berries on it. Not big fish, but there's a lot of fish on top of this reef. They're there. The graph don't lie. There we go, we just bit again. Nice. It's a nice walleye. A little Manitoba gold. There you go. Obviously, with the help of Toby, the owner here at Shining Falls, he, he puts us in the right spot, but even from day to day, they can they can move with on a, within a reef. So right now, the fish are right on top of the reef, which is kind of what you hope for, because it makes them pretty, uh, pretty easy. So right there, you can see it's just a big kind of mucky cloud. It could be bait, could be some fish mixed in. If I wanted to try to get a clear image, I could drop the sensitivity even more. So you're still getting that hard reading on the bottom, but now it kind of, you know, I don't think those are fish. So sometimes if you're marking lots of small fish, I'll drop my gain down a little bit. And sometimes you will get into situations where the fish are scared of your boat. So it's, you know, you might know where the fish are, know where the waypoint is, and you know, you can kind of check the distance. So right now, look, I'm on the right. Oh, there we go, sorry. This one's got a little bit of meat. Nice fish. Woohoo. What I was gonna say is, so right now if I select my active pane here, I can slide over and I can tell that I'm 50 feet from the waypoint, it's to the east. So depending on where you're at, you'd be like, oh, if that's where I'm marking the fish, you can also hold off of that waypoint and cast towards it, which can be effective too, especially in the shallower water. Here, you know, we're fishing a flying lake. These aren't necessarily the most educated fish around. So you can kind of get away with just dropping right under the boat a lot of the time and catching them even in shallow water. Right now you can see there's still a couple of fish down there. And now that I turn the gain down, you might have a tougher time marking your jig, but the bigger fish will still show up. So that's a way to kind of make sure you're focusing on the ones you want if, if you want bigger fish. Going up and down, we'll see if we can get a fish eating just so you guys can see. Look, there's a fish underneath. Look, he's coming up. He's coming up, I'm lifting. I'm lifting, he's chasing. Oh, I'm around my rod tip, I got it. That was hilarious, but you could see him chase so far off the bottom. That's it. another decent fish. And it's a good way to tell the mood of the fish when you can see them in electronics too, because sometimes you'll see them and they only want to eat it off the bottom. And other times like that fish, he just came racing up. So it's a, it's a teaching tool as well. There's a the fish. Once you find the spot, you just keep laying waypoints. And as you can see, it'll eventually turn to spaghetti if we just keep catching fish on the same spot. And it is loaded. Another Shining Falls walleye. The biggest thing is just watching for that color change there because you can tell, so right now my bait's dropping down and you can see that fish just came down for the bait. He lifted up a bit. If I lift my jig, look at that. You can see the fish underneath. You can see him arcing up. There's like three of them there. Look at that, there's two more down there other than this one. So awesome. This will spoil a guy for walleye fishing. <laughs> awesome. I'm just going back and forth over the same stuff. Cause I'm catching fish still. Until I stop catching fish, I'm gonna keep working over that. And then I'll probably explore the rest of the hump and drive over the spots I haven't mapped as much. Another walleye on the board. Just smacking them now. The jig popped, boom. All right, there's another fish. Jig dropping down, there might be another one hugging bottom. It's kind of tough to tell with all that junk down there. So here, if you go into your sonar settings, mega chirp, uh, surface clutter, you can play with that one depending on how you know messy your screen is. Um, for 2D, I know a lot of people do max mode, but clear mode is what I've been using. Um, fish ID, that's the icons. That one you want to turn off. Color, A scope. So A scope is that live section on the side there. So you want to turn a scope on real-time window color a scope so that's what's giving me that little area right there which is nice if you do want to see your lure or see you know real time exactly what's happening down there all right we're dropping down look at those that's two nice fish there maybe three that is what i want to see the fish are still there there we go there's a bite decent 
on a big hump, it just, it, it pays to take the time to drive around, mark waypoints, because you can get caught up fishing for, you know, either the smaller school or just onesies, twosies, when there is maybe a school of more fish. And that's something that when I fish with my family, sometimes like, Jay, why do you drive so much? You're just staring at the graph. It's like, well, I would rather drive around and find a spot where we can catch, you know, 20 fish in an hour than fish, you know, 15 different spots, maybe, you know, catch a dozen fish all day, right? Ooh, there's a fish. He's on it. I just saw that one little bump on the bottom. Oh, wow. One of the better fights we've had. Ooh, maybe a pike. Nope. It's a nice soul walleye. Nice perky dorsal. Sweet. Jig in a minnow. I'm gonna kick us in reverse. There might be multiple fish there. Look at this, look at that fish coming up. Look at him coming up, I'll stop above him. See my bait coming down, he's racing up for it. Oh, come on. That was so cool. These fish are aggressive, even in these calm conditions. This is pretty good fishing. And I've also asked people, you know, what should I use for a transducer mount? Because you can buy portable ones, but honestly, if you're in a pinch, just take a hockey stick or take a, a two by four and just attach that transducer on the side. Use a C-clamp if you're using a little aluminum boat and you can make a portable rig. They're, like I have a nice portable bracket I found on Amazon, but really it's just, you know, don't let that stop. You use a board and just attach it to the back of your boat. Well guys, that's, uh, that's kind of how I use my graph. It didn't go like super in depth in the settings, but you kind of play around with those and figure it out. Um, I, I love these for the price point, small portable. I bring it on all the flyouts, put it on my kayak. I mean, it doesn't have the mapping for everywhere. So depending on what I'm using, I might use a different graph depending on the mapping. But for fly-ins, when I need auto charting, I love the uh, map creating capabilities of this one. The 2D sonar is definitely, and side imaging is great for finding walleyes on a lake like this in the middle of nowhere.